Well, welcome back to the Maverick Studio. I'm Mark, I'm here with Steve, and this is our second of two-part series here on using the placeholder generator to make a story port directly in Final Cut Pro. So if you missed last week, you might want to go back and check that out. There's probably a link below or off to the side there. But Steve, why don't you take us through uh, what we're going to do now using this really cool generator. Well, as a quick review, I was making a storyboard for a short film that I was uh, producing, and here I have this couple, and I added this move to uh, the shot, this storyboard using element. Using the Ken Burns. Using the Ken Burns effect. Mm -hmm. And then I cut to a close-up, and you're going to see what the limitations are. If I hit uh, Command-4 to open up the inspector, you noticed that I had a lot of parameters. I can change the number of people and the framing in the sky, in the background. I'm not interested in it, any of that because it's got the same background as the previous shot. You yeah. see the city. But what I'm interested in is changing the relationship of those two um, characters, those avatars, those cutouts. In other so, words, I so want you to, don't want them to be friends anymore. You want them to be I want, lovers. I, I want them to be lovers. <laughs> I want them to be uh, you know boss and employee or yeah, whatever. I need whatever. to I need to change their relationship to each other. Their spatial their relationship. Their spatial relationship, ah, which will okay. communicate a lot yes. uh, to to the uh, you know, the person audience. who's looking to the audience. Right. So I just, I can't create an over-the-shoulder shot. There's there's nothing there that allows me to change that. Okay, so you can't move the characters in the scene, basically. We can get closer to them, but you can't move them individually right. or in relationship to each other. So this is where... But you're going to show us a way to do that. Yes, and this is where motion comes in. And, I and love it. again, motion and Final Cut tied at the hip offers so much functionality, you can go in and make make some changes and have them appear in Final Cut Pro. And so we're going to do that using the, well, using the placeholder, the generator. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go into the generator browser and just to show you where I'm at, it's in the elements group category. Category. Okay. And there's the actual placeholder. So that's what we've been using. Okay. So you're going to control click or right click and choose open the copy in motion. Because just like just about all of these generators and titles and transitions and effects, they're built using motion. Built so in you're going to modify a, a copy of this using motion. That's right. Now, when you first open this, it can be quite overwhelming. It's like, what am I looking at here? You can see there's there's layers, there's close-ups, there's medium shots, there's storyboard, there's backdrops. I, 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 I don't even know where to start. It seems a little overwhelming. So I'm just going to give you a couple of steps to narrow down the selection field so you can get Great. right what you want. Want. So first thing I'm going to do is click on this item in the layers pane called rig. Now, a rig is essentially a, a setup for certain things that have been published into Final Cut Pro 10. Like when you choose how many characters are in the scene or what the background, that's been rigged that way. I like to think of the rig as kind of like the puppeteer or the marionette, the guy who's controlling all the strings that make the character move. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that item called rig, and you're going to want to open this thing called the HUD. Okay. Heads up So display. I'm going to turn it close. It just You can get to it by clicking the little button, and it brings up this, this rig, this HUD rig, rig HUD, rig HUD. And the first thing you want to do is you're going to set this up how you want it to be saved in Final Cut. So this looks identical to the list of parameters that we saw in Final Cut Pro. It's exactly the same list of okay. parameters. Right. Great. So what we want to do is, is modify this in that we want to set up the scene. Make it match. Make, make it match. So okay. in this case, we have two people. Mm -hmm. We want a medium shot. Okay. We want it to be a uh, distant city. Okay. And we want it to be a sunrise sunset. So that matches what you had in Final Cut. So it matches okay. what we had in Final mm -hmm. Cut. Now, like I said, I want to have independent control of the woman and the man in terms of spacing, position. So I need to locate where that character is. The thumbnails seem pretty helpful. Yes, the thumbnails are very, <laughs> very helpful here. In fact, if I just turn off that whole group, they just go away. Okay. And in fact, if you spill open the group, now, now you're getting you're drilling into uh, the group. Now you can see the there's woman the woman, the uh -huh. there's a man. You can actually open up further, because that's a group, there's the woman right there. There okay. she is right there. Uh -huh. So what I'm going to do is select the woman, go to the inspector, go to properties, and I'm going to publish a couple of parameters. I want to publish the position parameters, and I want to publish the scale. Now, of course, position controls where she is on screen. See, I'm dragging the position mm -hmm. over here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little arrow right next to position and choose Publish. And I'm going to do the same thing for scale. I'm going to move my pointer over here next to scale. I'm going to choose Publish. All right, so far so good. So what just happened? Well, 
I'm gonna then click the project icon in the layers pane and then click the project pane over here to see all the parameters that have been published. Mm -hmm. And notice down here, position and scale has the been, you just selected. They've been wanna, added to that list of published parameters. Right, and I can then I can actually test to make sure this is the right thing mm -hmm. that I'm doing. There's the position and I can play at the scale, right? And published parameters are the things that will show up in Final Cut Pro. Exactly. So these two will now show up. Now there's one thing that you recommend, and I highly recommend you do this, is that you, you label this. So this will say woman position, right? So we know what, it, you know, otherwise it would just say position. Well, what does that mean? But now you know it means the position of the woman and the scale of the woman. Scale okay. of the woman, right. Woman position, mm -hmm. woman scale, right. I could do the same for the man, but you get the general idea. Right. All right. So what I'm going to go up here and just file, and all I have to do is choose save. Save original, and I'm going to go back to Final Cut Pro, go back to the generators, go into elements, and you'll see there, there's the placeholder copy. That's the copy it made. That's, That's the what copy. you just saved. Okay. So what I'm going to do is drag this on top of the non, well, the first instance, it didn't have the ability to change the right, position. Right, because when you make a change, it's, it's a, whole, a whole new you version. Have to, you have to replace it, yes. replace completely. So there, there I have that placeholder in there, select it. So check it out. Check it out. Yeah, Notice how I have now control. I have control now. Bad English. I have control now for the position of the woman. So I can say maybe move uh -huh. her a little closer. I'll give her scale up a little bit. Move her over a little bit more this way. More scale. Because maybe I want to. I, want, I have the ideas. I want to do a kind of a. Now that really looks like an over the shoulder shot. Yeah. Now it's more of an over the shoulder shot. Very cool. Very cool. And all you did is go into motion, publish a couple additional parameters, and all of a sudden this generator takes on a whole other level of functionality that you can create. Well, yeah, and, 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 just, and just so you say, I mean, it's not, this isn't just a kind of a rudimentary exercise. This is something I would I put in my film. Here's the actual finished film or the, the intro scene. So you can see, you can see the intro scene. There's the finished film that the there's storyboards. A city are, in the there's a city in the background, uh -huh. and there's the characters. You can see we're doing a slight push in there. And these storyboard uh, elements are tremendously helpful for setting a frame. There's your over-the-shoulder shot. Yep. There, there, there she is. You can see her in the foreground there. So when you go on, when you actually go out to shoot, the cinematographer, the director, they know exactly what they're after, right. and there's not a lot, of, discussion a lot of time. Saves, saves a, a lot of time. time, and time is money. That's so right. great, you have, a, you have a very clear vision of what you want to execute in right. your film. So, there's a very good use for placeholders that maybe you haven't thought of. Very nice, Yes. cool, Steve, That's excellent. So. excellent. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, check us out at rippletraining.com for more training on Final Cut Pro 10, Motion, DaVinci Resolve, uh, at Ripple Training, follow us on Twitter. We've got a YouTube channel, so check that out, where we list all of our Mac Break Studios, as well as every Monday we publish tips on both Motion and Final Cut, and you want to check those out as well. So thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.